Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. First, let me introduce myself. I am Katie Browning, a Community Engagement Manager here at Capato. And today we're really excited to chat with all of you about the Capato DevOps Exchange. As you know, we recently launched DevOps Exchange and it's the first enterprise SaaS marketplace for DevOps. And this is the second episode of a webinar series where we are going to be promoting listings by our partners, community members, and Capato Labs. And today, I'm super excited to chat with Clayton about AI-powered code reviews for Salesforce development teams. Before we get started, though, I first want to say a big thank you to all of you, whether you're a customer, a partner, a community member. We are so thankful to have you in our Capato community, and we simply want to say thank you before we begin today. We appreciate your energy and all the inspiration you bring, and ultimately, you're the reason that we're able to be here building and being innovative on our DevOps platform. As I mentioned, we have some great speakers today. So me, Katie Browning, I'm going to wrap up with an introduction and give you a few updates on what's happening in the Capato community so you can stay connected there. Then I'll be passing it over to Alan Jimenez. He is our Senior Director of Product Management at Capato. And then Alan is going to have a great conversation with Lorenzo Frattini, who is the founder of Clayton. What you can expect from today's conversation is a few community updates, which we'll cover in just a second, a walkthrough of what is the Capato DevOps Exchange, a fireside chat about the best practices for code review, and then Clayton is actually going to do a live demo and presentation of their solution. And then we'll wrap it up with time for questions at the end. So be sure to utilize that Q&A feature in the chat. So if you're not already a member of the Capato community, it's definitely a great time to get signed up. You can scan the QR code here and it will take you right to the sign up page and you can use the referral code Clayton Webb. If you didn't know, the DevOps Exchange actually lives on the Capato community, so you're going to want to get plugged in there so you can access all things DevOps Exchange. And as a special thank you for attending today's session, I also have a Capato Robotic Testing Certification Code. If you want to take a screenshot of this screen, go ahead. You can use that code in the Capato Academy to help you get certified on Capato Robotic Testing. And lastly, I want to extend an invitation to all of you for our upcoming Capato Community Day event happening on March 23rd. This is a jam-packed day all about our community members celebrating success stories, giving out innovation awards, and hearing from great speakers, partners, community members, nine different breakout sessions where you'll be able to get some hands-on learning all about Capato and DevOps. So you can go to capato.com slash capato community day to RSVP for that a bit, and hopefully you'll be able to make it. We'll be talking about the DevOps exchange there more, doing some demo jams around the different listings. So I'd love to have you attend that event. And with that, I am happy to pass it over to Alan, who's going to walk us into the conversation around what is Capato DevOps exchange. Katie, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I can also share some of that excitement in this second installment of the Partner Spotlight Sessions for the Copado DevOps Exchange. Uh, I'm Alan Jimenez. I'm a Senior Director of Product Management. And I'm, uh, together with the team, uh, uh, basically responsible for growing the DevOps Exchange as our number one uh, enterprise marketplace for DevOps solutions. So uh, for those people that do not know what the Copado DevOps Exchange is, um, first of all, uh, we launched this with the ambition to um, help our DevOps community, which is comprised of more than 65,000 members, to really have the ability to extend their Copado journey, not only with the solutions and the core products that we bring into the market, which we know that have made our customers very successful, but we always know that there's gonna be a team out there or a specific set of individuals that have a very peculiar challenge on their DevOps journey. So what we did is that we have created or we have transcended our product into a platform 
that will allow those teams to create extensions and create solutions so they can solve those very specific challenges. It's an, an easy way to explain this is that the Copado DevOps Exchange is our app exchange. The only difference is that this is really targeted for DevOps solutions, right? So um, we have, the, over a couple of years ago, we have offered uh, this platform and these extensibility features. So not only our community can build innovations on top of the platform, but also our Coparo Labs team. And more importantly, in the context of this conversation, we are engaging with uh, partners in the Salesforce uh, ecosystem that we know that have best of breed solutions that solve very specific uh, uh, issues. Well, we wanna connect with them and extend our solution to connect with their specific platforms, right? Which is the purpose of this conversation today. So you might ask yourself, what can you find in this marketplace? Uh, what's in there? Well, we initiated this, uh, this journey with a relatively small set of solutions. I think we started with about 30 solutions somewhere in December. And up to today, we can find more than 45 solutions. And each of these solutions will target a specific, uh, let's say, uh, challenge that you need to solve, whether it's a challenge that you have on security testing, a challenge that you have in reporting or monitoring, or even deploying applications like Salesforce Marketing Cloud or Commerce Cloud. These are the type of integrations that you will find in the marketplace. Now, in total, what you will see is that there are five different types of solutions that you can find here. For those people uh, uh, familiar with the Coparo data deployer, we offer different data templates and we have, for example, data templates to move records for Viva, for CPQ, or even Encino. Uh, so that's a couple of examples in there. Uh, we also have integrations that rely on what we call the quality integration framework. And this is quite relevant because this is the topic of today in an integration that Clayton built, which is a quality tool. They have leveraged the quality integration framework to build that connection with their own platform, right? Which is quite exciting. There's also our so-called uh, functions uh, that can be compatible with both Coparo Classic, but also the Coparo second generation. As you guys know, we also, uh, one of our core products is the CRT, Coparo Robotic Testing. So in this marketplace, you will also find what we call uh, test accelerators, which are basically starter kits to kickstart your test implementations for whether for Salesforce or ServiceNow or Encino or whatever, or maybe SAP, right, for example. So we have all these different accelerators in place. Last but not least, we also have what we call enterprise applications, which essentially this is a full blown extension that will allow you to commit, promote and deploy not only Salesforce clouds like service and sales, but also in the example of marketing cloud, we are working with our partner Accenture that basically build that extension on top of our platform to be able to deploy the marketing cloud. So in a summary, guys, there's quite a comprehensive set of uh, solutions out there. And we are really excited today to focus really on the integration solution type based on the quality integration framework, which Clayton has leveraged on to build their own integration. Now, before we jump into the details um, of the Clayton solution and the value that they are providing, uh, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Lorenzo into the stage because I would like to have a quick conversation uh, with him. Um, I would like to understand a little bit more in detail and also to help us on, uh, help our community to understand why quality reviews in font, uh, quality, code quality is important, why code reviews are important. So Lorenzo, are you out there? I am, hello. Thank you, Alan. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, it's uh, super excited to, to join this session today. Uh, my name is Lorenzo, I'm the founder of Clayton. Um, we have been working with uh, uh, Copado uh, for a while, since the, the kind of the early days uh, in, uh, for, for, for the launch of the, 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 the DevOps Exchange. Um, and so we've been part of this journey together. It was a, a great experience. And um, yes, we've been, uh, I'm super excited to be here, Alan. So super happy to yeah. join you in this conversation. We, yeah, no, um, it's been great. Uh, it's it's been a great experience, Lorenzo. So I remember the first days when we started uh, the conversation, right? So for us, this is a milestone, and we're very happy to have you guys on stage uh, to show the value that you bring into uh, the code quality realm. Absolutely. So, Lorenzo, um, look, uh, 
I, I would like to, 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 to make sure that the community understands uh, why you are uh, offering a solution into the market, right? And I think there's a few questions that I would like to, to, to set on stage, right? Uh, to help us understand that. Uh, so first of all, I would like to start with the concept of uh, code quality and maybe in your experience, can you share uh, what are the most common engineering errors uh, that you find in development teams and what their impact is? Sure, so that's a great question actually. So uh, first of all, uh, the, um, we, we talk about um, sometimes in, uh, using different terminology uh, in a very it's common, right? But we, 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 we use terms such as code quality, technical depth, um, vulnerability sometimes, uh, almost interchangeably. Um, my experience in the Salesforce space starts from a very technical role. I've been working with um, companies building, you know, complex implementations as a developer first, as a CTA later. So I've been familiar with some of the challenges that, you know, emerge when you are building, you know, tech-heavy solutions uh, on top of the Salesforce platform. And um, we have some very interesting insights about, the, the, about this that we will share in a minute. But um, we see that many companies um, have, are, are seriously impacted by um, overlooking either security or technical depth. So there are, a very, um, there are a few patterns that we see over and over, especially as teams grow and uh, what they um, the, the side scale and they become more distributed and they start being exposed to certain problems that we see kind of very commonly in the industry and so my journey has been essentially uh, on a quest to address this problem and help teams kind of automate certain all these problems away so they can be really successful on, on salesforce yeah, not typically all these problems will compound, I would assume, and they will have a compounding impact in the productivity of the teams going forward, I would assume, right? Absolutely. So that what, what happens is that, um, you know, we all want to uh, build fast. Time to market is like the big yeah. thing, and that's what tools like Salesforce and Copado are ultimately yeah. after. No? So we are uh, all about making changes as fast as possible so that our time to market can be as quick as, quick as possible. But what happens is that as we um, build more and more complex solutions the, and we kind of take short shortcuts, uh, so building a, an easy solution that we will have to rework later or not thinking about security and or yeah. accidentally introducing a flow or a misconfiguration, what happens is that we are adding what is called a technical debt or a security debt. And over time, these things compound and are um, reducing the velocity of teams, but also putting adoption at risk. And all these things uh, can affect the, the return of it on investment, but also the security risk of a company, the reputational risk. So I have a very broad uh, set of implications there. It could also affect turnover because we see yep. developers uh, in this day and age that are leaving companies because they're, they're, the experience they have on the code base is horrible. And perhaps there is so much technical depth that they simply cannot get work done um, as, as well as they should or they should be supposed to. So this is, is impacting companies and teams in a very real way. And uh, as you say, it compounds over time. So absolutely something yep. worth discussing. Yeah, talking about companion, right? Because, I mean, how can how can the, the the development team start? I think you mentioned technical debt quite a lot, right? But how can you measure that? How can they understand where they are and where they can go? So that that's that's a, a very good point. So I would say that the easiest way to get started is by having thinking about it and having the discipline to um, talk openly about. Uh, technical standards and security standards. So every team should at least start with a checklist uh, and you can find very, very good checklists online. Uh, there is guidance from Salesforce and there is a lot of uh, community contributions out there that will essentially give you an idea of things that your uh, code should do or should not do, uh, mistakes that you should avoid, right? And there are so many examples that, uh, that we can make. Um, for example, um, there are certain ways to um, write integration or um, 
when you create the Apex integration in your um, code, you should be using name credentials in a certain way, your certain Salesforce features, instead of doing things in other ways. Otherwise, you know, you will have to go back and rework that piece of code. Yeah. So there are so many things to take into account, but the very first place to start will definitely be, in my opinion, to look into implementing some sort of checklist. And that is always kind of a very good baseline. Now, the challenge there is that as your code base grows, doing these things manually over and over will become uh, more and more difficult because you know humans don't scale well and that's yeah. where tools like Clayton can can give a very very big help yeah absolutely you, you want to have a starting point and maybe your solution can help us understand where the technical depth sits at the moment and then that becomes a backlog for improvement going forward right that, absolutely absolutely so, yeah. and, uh, we are all about measuring that and giving teams insight that they can use to improve and to take all the repetitive work that is needed to kind of assess, review, as uh, not only at the beginning to baseline development, but mm -hmm. also as the team works story after story on building and shipping great yeah. functionality, making yeah. sure that all these changes are secure and technical debt free as much as possible. So absolutely, yeah. that's super important. And, yeah, interesting. Um, and yeah. I think it's yeah. also this is also something that you know very much in line with what Copado does, right? Because uh, DevOps is ultimately about um, automating everything that you can and not reinventing the wheel, but leveraging you know the best tools and the best uh, technology to remove workload from humans and let them focus yeah. on really you know the hard bit, the bit that is. Yeah unique and only you know the human talent can 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 provide everything else that is repetitive should be automated because absolutely that's, that's the way forward uh, one of the things i've seen in the industry is that uh, when it comes to um, code quality and vulnerabilities that are found in production they are just found too late right um i think part of the best practices for continuous delivery is the shifting quality to the left right and i see the I think code reviews are an important uh, vehicle to make sure that we adopt a preventive framework for these type of vulnerabilities. Can you tell us how you can, can how we can use code reviews to help address the security and these errors? Can we prevent them? Yeah, absolutely. So a uh, code review is all about um, finding bugs early. Okay, so depending on what you look for, uh, you can use code reviews for security, and that's very common actually. Uh, the, the kind of the, the guidance that OWASP provides that is kind of the state of the art of kind of security, secure development uh, is starts from having um, secure development checklists in place. So mm -hmm. it's not a new, a, a new idea, uh, yeah, but yeah. also um, the, you can take all the guidance that Salesforce provides and um, around performance, scalability to large volumes, unit testing, how to write unit testing, and you can decide yeah, yeah. to go as far as you want. Uh, yeah. You can take this best practice and list them in, in the form of testable criteria, and that's the foundation for a, for a code review. And typically the yeah. code review is something that you do as soon as development is done. So exactly. shifting left is all about moving this point of code review early and early, as, uh, as early as possible toward the point of development, uh, exactly. as close as possible to the point of development so that we can fail early. Failing early is good because if you uh, detect an issue, it can be a vulnerability, it can be a, a scalability bottleneck or a testing problem. Whatever that is, you want it to find it before it goes Sorry. live because the cost of fixing that problem and the impact it will have will be so much greater. In fact, is in uh, the, the the multiple you can think of is 10x, yep. 50x, 100 times um, yep. more expensive and costly to fix it, that issue after it's gone live. So shifting left is all about failing early, as I uh, as I say. Yeah, it's a it's a something that every team should embrace, embrace as much as possible. And you know, tools can help, but as I like to say, it's all about the culture and embracing the idea rather than uh, fixating on one tool or the other. It's all about 
embracing a culture of DevOps, a culture of yeah. failing early. That's kind of what makes uh, teams succeed ultimately. Yeah, quality should be an inherent attribute of the delivery team, right? So, uh, absolutely. So, look, Lorenzo, uh, uh, one last question, right? Because uh, I know that we can talk at great length on this. It's a, and I can see the excitement, right? Uh, but maybe just tell us in a very short uh, 30 seconds, uh, how do you think companies, uh, how do you think they can measure the success? Uh, what metrics would you propose and what goals should they have in place to improve their code quality practice? So it's, it's a great question. So some of the KPIs that we see using are around the, the fact density of applications. So if you start uh, from scratch, it is easy, right? You can simply count bugs, count vulnerabilities, yeah. and that's, that's kind of a, um, an easy way. But in the real world, especially at certain scale, what happens is that you will have certain amount of technical debt that you are inheriting. Mm -hmm. And there will be some new developments, some new project, new development work streams that are going on uh, to deliver new functionalities. So it's all about finding the right balance. Uh, so there are metrics that can help. Uh, one metric that, for example, we use uh, at Clayton is called uh, a defect density. Uh, for example, it's all about counting issues over the size of the code base. So you can have an indication of whether your problems are uh, further and further spread out, or uh, and, and that's what you want to have, right? So you are, yeah. as your um, code base evolves, the technical depth becomes more sparse, and that is a good thing. Uh, yeah. But also very, I mean, it's very important, especially when we're talking about security, to look at the severity and the scoring of each yeah. um, issue that you are uh, looking for. Uh, especially vulnerabilities and things that have a security impact that you know can have a serious um, impact on on integrity of data, on um, the, the the compliance of, a, of an organization, and the, you know security risk in general is a very very serious thing. It's typically a top yeah, priority. Absolutely. All these things, uh, you know, should simply count issues and vulnerabilities and time time to fix. Yeah. I think these are these are good places to start. Fantastic. No, this is great. This is great information. And, and for all the community members out there, I hope this conversation was interesting. Like I said, we can talk for hours on this, but I think uh, now, uh, uh, now now is the time, right? Because we, we have talked a lot about the code quality. In You can pretty much talk about it in theory, but of course you guys have found uh, a, a solution for those uh, type of challenges and you created a company and a product out of it. So, uh, Lorenzo, maybe this is the time that you uh, explain what Clayton is, uh, what the product does, and hopefully see a demonstration of your product and the integration with Coparo. Absolutely. Thank you, Alan. This is, this is uh, a great opportunity for us, actually. Very excited about uh, um, being here and show you uh, and tell you a little bit more about what we're doing. And uh, so, yes, uh, we, we started Clayton uh, because our experience told us that um, there, there were some problems that were affecting um, all the engineering teams out there uh, past a certain scale. Um, the, the, we have we scan roughly uh, two billion lines of code every day, so quite a lot, of, uh, quite a large amount of code. And what we see over and over again is that um, the vast majority of orgs of uh, um, Salesforce teams and in fact vulnerable code deployed in production and this this is a, i think is a very important point to make security is hard um it's there is an ex, there, uh, although salesforce is a secure platform uh, there are a lot of controls to do security right there are there is a, a shared responsibility model and developers and teams have the responsibility to actively think about security and write secure code now, this is tricky, and we see that many teams struggle with it. 76% is a very concerning number. Uh, now, of course, this is a stat that captures a wide range of security vulnerabilities. Not everything is, as, uh, is critical. Some vulnerabilities are harder to exploit and uh, are less um, um, 
uh, how to say, um, urgent than others. But nevertheless, very important in my opinion to note that many teams are still struggling with this. And then that's what we were discussing earlier, the, the concept of technical debt. Um, we uh, see that roughly 35% of the development costs of the Salesforce implementation are lost to technical debt. And if you think about you know, the size of the um, ecosystem, the amount, uh, the spend that companies are uh, putting into development, um, we believe that this is, a, this is co costing millions uh, to companies. And it's definitely something that could and should be addressed because there is technology today that can help automate a lot of these issues away. That can make teams so much more uh, performant, uh, efficient, and also make sure that the output of what all the developers are doing on this amazing platform is so much more streamlined. So the, the, these are some of the, the numbers that we see. And the way we have uh, approached the solution of this problem is to uh, create the world's first Git-based code review assistant for Salesforce engineering teams. Now, we know that when it comes to analyzing a lot of code, the traditional approaches are uh, using um, scanners or using uh, humans that are experts that understand Salesforce very well and perhaps combine these two things. Uh, at Clayton, we are taking things one step further. We combine static analysis with AI to find these vulnerabilities and prevent them, uh, also um, detect the development errors that you know, Salesforce developers might make, but also uh, we take things one step further and help uh, these teams fix uh, those issues automatically. And so in a nutshell, what are we doing at Clayton that is special? There are, I think, four things that make Clayton really um, kind of unique uh, proposition in this space. Uh, the first thing is that we have designed Clayton as a as a assistant that, for all intents and purposes, works like an added developer to your team. Um, and we we've, we've done this by adding uh, Clayton directly into Git and essentially working exactly as a developer would. The second thing is that is unique about Clayton is the, the fact that Clayton can produce fixes automatically. So unlike a traditional scanner that will give you um, issues and perhaps with not such a great confidence and uh, with some incorrectness. And uh, uh, what we talk about is the false positive rate that is typically uh, very high. A lot of the issues that are presented to developers are not real. Clayton uses AI to not only detect with um, absolute uh, accuracy, but also can produce the fix automatically. And we use generative AI to be able to do that. Uh, and I'm so excited about this technology and you know, the, the impact that this technology will have um, you know, in the DevOps space in general, it's all yet to come. And then another thing that we do is we provide these insights uh, for the team to you know, understand how they're doing and improve their performance. You know, you can improve what you don't measure. So we're all about capturing insight for teams to, to get better. And the last point, uh, we have built a library uh, of best practice. So uh, I mentioned earlier that the, the code reviews uh, can be done in checklists, and that's a great way to get started. But if you want to build the best possible checklist for your Salesforce development, you will very, very soon end up with checklist of hundreds, if not more, of items that you would have to repetitively apply. And what we're doing at Clayton is the world's most comprehensive library of automated checks so that you, your team can get advantage of the latest best practices uh, quickly without you know, worrying about it. And uh, I'm very excited now to give you um, a showcase of how Clayton and Copado work together and show you some of these uh, things in action. Okay, so let's have a look at how Clayton and Copado can work together. So let's say it's your very first day in a new, very complex, highly customized org. And let's say you want to tell whether your code is secure and perhaps measure its technical depth. 
But with, when you connect the two um, applications together by clicking a Clayton full scan, we will connect to the repo and Clayton will generate automatically uh, uh, an easy to understand report that covers everything that matters. Um, we, can, we can see, of course, the score, uh, the measurement of the technical depth. We can see what are the, the, um, at a high level, the issues that are detected in the code base, how it compares <coughs> to similar applications and uh, obviously drill down to any issues. So uh, let's have a look at how the state of security, for example, we can see that um, this application has uh, a few security issues that are open, uh, mostly cross-site scripting, uh, and a couple of sharing violations, uh, SQL injection, and of course we can drill down and see where the issues are. Okay, so in this case, I have a SQL injection, which is a kind of a serious vulnerability, uh, and I can see where is it in the code base. So the great thing here is that um, you can set up uh, Clayton and Copado to uh, use your own technical standards or use our curated presets. Now let's work on a story here. I've been working on a story on a geocoding service. Doesn't matter too much what the code looks like. I've done it before, uh, but how can your developers make sure that your code is secure, doesn't create any scalability bottlenecks, uh, it's well tested and follow every recommended best practice? Well, um, Clayton does this for you, <coughs> so you can relax. So essentially the way it works is that you can uh, commit your changes. So let's say that we uh, will, as part of these developments, we are committing our geocoding service and its test class. Okay, and we will commit these changes. Now this will take a while, but the, the great thing is that the, what's happening here is that Copado is retrieving the code from my developer a sandbox and of course committing this to git and uh, once this happens <coughs> we will see that um, Clayton the assistant will automatically pick this up and um, test it for us so Let's fast forward a little bit. And, okay, let's go back to the user story. Well, this is running. We can see that if we now go on the, okay, if, if we go back on a um, related list, we can see that Clayton has run a scan, is running another. And uh, of course, we can see what the result looks like. And so let's have a look at this. Um, and here, of course, there are the details of the scan. So we can see kind of the, um, the, the full report in uh, the Clayton application. But more importantly, you can see in Copado and get these results to create any sort of quality gate that you want to do if the code is problematic. Now, what I also wanted to show you is that uh, there is an, uh, an additional object here that shows all the issues that we have detected with this code base, uh, in this case, a sharing violation. And of course, we can kind of click through and see it. And so at this stage, what's uh, happening here is that the developer has completed the story. Um, the developer has pushed the story uh, through Copado and Clayton has checked this story against um, a number of uh, best practice. We looked into security, if the story was developed securely, if there is any um, vulnerability or misconfiguration, we looked for scalability bottlenecks. All these criteria can be set up in Clayton and they can be as many as you want. And at the end of this quick check, you will get a story that is either validated and ready to go or that should be reworked by the developer. Um, so let's have a look at what happened here is that um, if we look at what happened in the repo that is connected to this environment here now this might be something that you don't typically see but the the, the what's even a, a cooler here 
is that let's say that your code has some issues. If possible, Clayton generates automatically uh, the fix for you using generative AI. And yeah? let's, let's see a couple of examples here. So uh, we haven't seen the code, but we will see that the, the, the code that I have committed contains uh, a couple of, of trivial mistakes. And what's cool is that if the, the change is kind of simple enough, it's trivial enough, um, your developers that, that doesn't even have to change. Uh, the AI itself will do this for you. So in this case, I had a sharing violation. So the developer forgot to include a sharing in a class uh, which contains some data access. And, and Clayton is adding this for us automatically, almost acting as another developer in the team. And the another one that Clayton has detected is that the test that we have generated didn't have the um, didn't have any comment in this case you know it's not a big problem uh, but it's definitely adding assertions is definitely a, a quality that uh, makes the code easier to understand easy to read and ultimately easier to maintain uh, so the um, bot automatically generates this comment for you explaining what the code is doing and in doing so is acting uh, almost as another developer that is kind of looking after what the team is doing and without interrupting the developers the bot is automatically enhancing their code and there you go this is a quick overview into how Clayton and Copado work together so thank you everyone for taking a look of um, Clayton and Copado working together uh, hopefully this was um, helpful and interesting um, we're very excited about the tech that we are building and how we are helping teams, um, you know, taking the best of the technology um, to, to solve some of the problems that, you know, every engineering team faces on this platform. Um, we'd be very happy to answer any questions you might have. I think uh, we have some time, Alan, for, um, for questions. So, yeah, that would be, um, I would be very happy to answer any questions from from the audience. Yeah, Lorenzo, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for explaining uh, the, the integration and for walking us through the solution and especially the integration with Coparo, right? So that was very exciting. Uh, by the way, for everyone out there, apologies uh, for the first five minutes of the of this uh, webinar, we had some technical difficulties, so we appreciate your patience and stay in put. Uh, I think, uh, I hope it was all worth it. So, uh, yeah, actually, uh, Lorenzo, we do have some questions, right? So let's deep dive into those. Uh, there is a question that says, uh, how easy was it to create the integration with Coparo? Well, it was quite straightforward, to be honest. So there are a couple of, of great things about Copado. So the first is that, um, of course, the platform is is being built on top of Salesforce. It takes advantage of you know all the things that Salesforce um, provides out of the box, including um, API, for example, that um, quickly uh, you know allows us to kind of build integration between systems. And then the the quality integration framework that uh, Provado, uh, Copado provides on top of um, Salesforce really helped us kind of get um, a prototype together very fast and validate everything very fast. And in that sense, I guess that uh, the journey uh, in building an integration together was was absolutely straightforward for us. So I I I think it's a it's a very straightforward process. You know, as soon as uh, you have two systems, you know, ready to, you have your system sorted, essentially. Yeah. The integration is is quite quick. Yeah, th thanks for that. And, and kudos for the for the platform team in Copago, right? Uh, you're, you're doing very good marketing for them. Because, of oh, course, yeah. we are working, we're, we're working with you uh, as our preferred partners. But uh, one of the things that I will cover towards the end of the conversation is we want. We also want to leverage on on the innovation from the community, right? So, yeah, uh, having an easy path for integration certainly helps on leveraging those innovations into our platform. So, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Thanks a lot for that. 
Uh, I have another question. I think I know the answer for this one, but I'll let you uh, do. Uh, can Clayton work only with Caparo or also standalone? Well, uh, Clayton works uh, also standalone. So the, um, the way Clayton, we designed Clayton was as an assistant um, that um, adds the same, well, not the same, but behaves as an additional developer in the team. So we integrate and uh, through a Git workflow typically. So as long as you use some sort of Git workflow, Clayton can, can help. So we connect uh, straight to, to yep. GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, Azure DevOps, all the major Git providers. We have a kind of a ready to go integration. Yeah. All right, great. Of course, uh, the, the integration will augment the experience for the full blown DevOps journey, right? For Copado users. So, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we, we ultimately want to help developers where they are. And uh, it's yeah. important. It's all about, you know, shifting left. So, uh, it, it's yeah. important to, to meet them where they are. I, I guess that, yeah, that I think is... quality, quality gates are a perfect uh, place for that yeah. uh, in the DevOps life cycle. Okay, great. Uh, Lorenzo, uh, how does Clayton solution handle false positive in its uh, false positives in its automated code review process? Yes. Yeah, so the, uh, it's a good question, and, and clearly this is a this is a major area of noise for um, developers, especially at some scale. Uh, so there are a number of things that we do. Uh, so first of all, we use a number of techniques. As I mentioned, we use program analysis and AI together, uh, and we use a number of techniques under the hood um, to suppress uh, false positives you know, right off the bat before we even present uh, the results to users. So typically, we already have a very very high accuracy rate already uh, as a starting point. But let's say that we detect a vulnerability that is not uh, exploitable, which is, you know, is a absolutely reasonable scenario. So the kind of the detection is accurate, but the context of the issue is such, uh, is such that the, the issue cannot be exploited. We actually let um, teams dismiss that and what we do is we track uh, we keep note of the um, signature of that code um, using git, git metadata about it and that helps us you know the code evolves so lines move in the code and that uh, doing this we can remember that something was dismissed without uh, the issue popping up when the line moves up and down or in another file so there there is work we do to i mean we are all about developer productivity and uh, we have a i think a pretty neat solution to uh, remove the noise entirely or almost you know entirely to to team from teams so yeah 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 good yeah we're, we're, that, that's very clear uh lorenzo we're getting more questions here uh, this is an interesting one. Is Clayton exclusively built for Salesforce? And does it scan all Salesforce metadata types or are there any exclusions? Uh, great question. So uh, yes, Salesforce is, is uh, Clayton is built uh, uh, for Salesforce by Salesforce experts, for Salesforce experts. So we are really want to build uh, you know, the best assistant out there for, for teams building on these platforms. Covering all the metadata is important. At the moment, we cover all the all the languages, so Apex, Visual Force, Aura, Lightning Web Component, and all and also um, flows and all the the low code development as well, uh, and a number of additional configuration metadata. But we are working to close that gap. So uh, Salesforce metadata now has I think 600, 400, like hundreds type of, of metadata and we are working to cover them all. So our target and aspiration is to close the gap. We are actively working to uh, add continuously new metadata. We don't scan them all uh, yet, uh, but we are working towards that. So we, yeah. we, are, we are planning to add more and more, um, you know, over time. Great, great. Uh, I'm not surprised about the following question. I think you, you generated some interest from 
uh, your generative AI how to fix. Yeah. So there's a question about it. Uh, you mentioned about the generative AI auto fix. When is it generative AI auto AI auto fix ready? So we are uh, we will be showing this feature for the first time at TDX next week. Um, okay. And at this stage, the feature is, is uh, working, but it's it's coming soon to our platform. So in the coming weeks, we, we will start rolling this out to all our users and customers. Um, and uh, we will we will plan to add this to the Copado integration shortly after. So yeah, we are just uh, um, for the first time showing this live. But yeah, it's uh, we are working on getting this. Um, rolled out in the coming uh, weeks, and uh, I think that's that's as far as I can go. But yeah, no, we're super excited about that okay. as well. Oh, great! If you have a video uh, about that uh, sometime next week, that would be great because I'm not sure if the guys in EMEA will attend TDX in San Francisco, but certainly the guys that I will will attend will invite you guys to visit uh, Clayton, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So. Stay tuned. Connect with us. Um, and uh, we will be, yeah, we will share more about yeah. that for sure. Yeah, indeed. I have a fun question for you, Lorenzo. Uh, I know Clayton is the name of the product and the company, but the added developer, right? The bot, does it have a name? Well, we we are, for us, Clayton is that, right? So Clayton <laughs> is the additional guy that you can, can add. There you go. You know, we want, the name of the we want it. Yeah, we wanted we wanted to have a name to sound like a like a person, and that was the idea from you know from the get go. So, and uh, yeah, no, that's that's essentially why the product is named that way. We wanted to, to sound like a real person, and I think we're you know it sounds like a person and it's starting yeah. working like a person as well. So we're super super yeah, happy no, about that. Super happy, yeah. I'm glad I asked, and, and I cannot wait to meet Clayton. In person, <laughs> so, amazing, amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, Lorenzo. One last question, right? Which I think is quite relevant in the context of this presentation. People are asking where can they get the integration uh, with uh, Copado, right? And I, I can answer that question. Um, well, you can get it in the Copado DevOps Exchange. Uh, it's as easy as going to the Success Community, uh, success.copado.com, and there's a tab for the DevOps Exchange. But we wanted to make it easy for all of you guys and just take a screenshot or even scan directly with your phone. You will land straight into the listing where you can literally just install the solution right away into your Copado org. Um, so uh, all the information about the solution, screenshots and uh, user guides can be found in that uh, specific list, right? So we invite all of you to take a look at it, maybe try it out in your sandbox organization. And if you're really, Want to go forward and make use of it? Go and straight into production, so you can easily get it in there. Uh, Lorenzo, this was a pleasure, man. I, I really appreciate uh, you guys taking the time and the, and explaining the value proposition. We've been working on this for quite a while already, so this is the, the like I said earlier, a milestone for us. So I really appreciate uh, taking the stage for us today. Oh, it's a pleasure. And if I may add something, uh, by all means, if you want to check Clayton out, uh, do exactly what Alan uh, said. And also reach out to us because we will be there to help. We are passionate about this. We, we are genuinely a team of people that want to help teams um, do better and uh, take the best out of our technology. So by all means, once you use the QR code here, um, see the listing install and also reach out to us. We will be there to help you. Perfect, Lorenzo. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate uh, Thank you. you and your team participating. Cheers. For all the community teams out there, uh, this presentation was uh, focused on on our partners, right? Uh, but at the same time, we mentioned it earlier, uh, we have opened up the Copado DevOps Exchange for innovation, not only for our partner ecosystem, but also we are allowing our community members to contribute and publish their own solutions on the Caparo Devils Exchange. And uh, the idea is that we know that you guys are solving, uh, let's say, challenges in the field for your own specific situation, for your own team, 
for those consulting partners, you are solving uh, challenges for your customers. And we want to give you the opportunity to leverage on the Copado platform to extend it in a way to solve those challenges, right? And we want to provide a very easy way for you to publish that solution online. So if you go to the Copado DevOps Exchange, you can go to the, to the let's say, to the top of the page where you see how you can publish your solution. And we give you some indication and some instructions on how to do that. We make it uh, as simple as we can. And then you can basically uh, go in and, and contribute to the community, which not only is gonna help you and your team, but it can also help other teams in other customers solve similar challenges, because we know that those challenges can be ever present across different accounts, right? Uh, in order for you to publish this, it's a very simple process. You will take the lead on building the solution, packaging that solution, using the, the, the form to submit the solution in Devos Exchange, fill all the details, and then we will do a, a review internally, both from a security standpoint, but also to make sure that the marketing details of the solution are, 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 are well put. We will also help you and, and advise you uh, in case there is any changes that we need to do. And if we all agree, then we can publish it. And then that solution is going to be out there for our entire 65,000 members of the community and 1,200 customers. And you will get this visibility on your profile, right? So you will ultimately be considered one of the publishers in the Coparo Devils Exchange. So we are really excited about this, guys. The whole company is behind this journey. And uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to, to reach out to us. We're here to help. And again, I want to thank our partner, Clayton, for participating in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this session. And more importantly, I want to thank you for your patience and for putting some time in your calendar to see what's in the Devils Exchange and see what our partners have to offer. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a fantastic day.